Our next guest says that his greatest achievement are his sons, and he's got every reason to be proud, as John Fury's son, Tyson, prepares for the biggest boxing match of his career in Vegas this weekend. It's just the latest chapter for a family united by a passion for the sport. And John Fury joins us now. Well, listen, first of all, good luck. Good Thank luck you, this Richard. Saturday night. Thank you very um, much. I was saying earlier that uh, I was sitting in for Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain earlier this week, and we had your daughter-in-law, your, your son's wife, the lovely Paris on. And what struck me as the interview sort of went through was how incredibly honest she was. There was nothing that we asked her that she wasn't prepared to give a completely down-the-line answer on, and that's like the documentary. The documentary that you're in is just so frank. There's nothing that any of you back away from. Did you... This is the one on ITV. Did you know, before the cameras rolled, that you were going to be that open and that... So, you know, ask me anything and I'll tell you. Absolutely. You know, you? We've nothing to hide as a family. We're just like millions of others, you know, doing day-to-day -day stuff. You know, we don't do anything different. Just because I've got famous sons, it doesn't mean you've got to try and not be yourself. You've got six, haven't you? Six sons, six yeah. Six sons. I have um, indeed, yeah. How, and how, how far does Tyson... How, how is Tyson in that order? He's second eldest. Second eldest, mm -hmm. right. And would you... I mean, that's six sons, that's no daughters. I had a daughter, but she passed away many years oh, ago. Oh, my dear. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yes, no problem. That. Um, but six sons, uh, and all of them sort of obviously interested in, in, in boxing. Yeah. Uh, what kind of father did you have to be? I presume pretty tough. I think it's just the way I was brought up, really. You know, as a, as a young boy, my father was very strict, more like an army sergeant, drill master, to be fair. Really? And uh, if he laid the law down, we had to adhere to it. And that's basically how I fetch my children up, you know, to do what's right and try and do the best they can out of life and make the best of themselves and what they have. But also, yeah. in terms of fighting, to win. There's no point fighting if you're not going to fight to win. Absolutely. There's no point playing with it. Yeah. I mean, and, and you're very open about this in the documentary. One of the reasons that you're here and you're not in Vegas is you can't go because you've got a conviction for, for gouging a guy's eye out in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an unregulated fight. It was mm. a personal thing. Um, have you passed that on in your genes, do you think, that, um, I wouldn't say killer instinct, because it's not, but the instinct to get the guy down and finish him off, whatever? The thing is, like me, when you're fighting outside in crowds of people and more than one people at you, things can go wrong, accidents can happen. Mm. But in Tyson's case, he's got my genes, but it's channeled in the right direction, right, if you it's will. it's controlled. It's controlled. You know, like me, I was a bit of an erratic, erratic person growing up, you know, I didn't pay much mind or thought to what I was doing, and I've learned better sense. Mm. Mm. As the years can, I have gone on. That, can I ask you a question that I, I, I put to your daughter-in-law in Paris? I said, you know, she goes to the fights and uh, she says she feels every punch and she watches and she picks up the pieces afterwards, win or lose, which usually win, almost always win. Um, and I said this to her, do you worry about brain damage? You know, do you worry about dementia down the line? Because some boxers, they call it punch drunk, get it. Some footballers get it from heading the ball. As a father, do you worry about that? Because he does take punches to the head. There's always a risk of clear and present danger in a boxing field, like any other combat sport, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. But judging what I've been through in my life, and I've took plenty of knocks and bangs, <laughs> and I'm OK, I can still talk, I'm not the cleverest person in the world, I, I admit that. Not about that. But I can still string a sentence together, so it all depends on your DNA and your makeup. Mm. These boys are bred to fight. Mm. You know, that's what they do, they know nothing else. You see, that's, that, it's, it's fascinating to talk about that. You, you, said, you talked about your genes, and yeah. you said that your, your boy Tyson has mm -hmm. inherited your genes, and you can see yourself in them, presumably. You, you, you see yourself reflected, to a certain extent. Tyson has also had, um, and he's very, very frank about this, uh, mental health problems. He's had uh, a breakdown. He's, uh, I, I, I mean, I think he's, I think he's fairly marvellous, actually. I, I love watching him. I don't mean fighting. I don't watch that. But <laughs> don't I think mean. as an individual, I think as a man, um, he's, he's a very, um, he's a very endearing kind of fellow. Now, we're talking about genes. You were the same, weren't you? You had your own mental crisis. Yes, I've had that all most of my life, but it's how you deal with it, you know, and uh, I knew nothing else. But in my life, I never had time on my hands to worry about stuff. I get depressed because mm. I always had too much work to do, putting food on table, bringing kids up. You know, it's hard work on its own, and I never got time to get depressed in the old days because where do I work? Sometimes used to work from 6 o'clock till 10 o'clock in the evening. Mm. You know, and I was that tired when I come home, I could do nothing else but sleep. But it was always there in the background, wasn't it? It's always, it's been, always been there, there, yeah. It's always there. So what do you think? As, uh, can I ask how old you are, mate? I'm 54. OK, well, so I'm, I'm, I've got 10 years on you. I'm, I'm 63. You I don't mean, look it. Times have, <laughs> well, times have changed so much. I mean, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation even 10 years ago about mental health. We wouldn't no. be, he wouldn't have admitted on camera that he had these issues and, no. and, and, and sometimes very close to suicidal tendencies. He wouldn't have come out with that. But... The, the climate's completely changed, hasn't it? It's possible to talk about it now without shame, without embarrassment. 
this is a great thing about the 21st century. People yeah. now are more open than they've ever been. And if people suffering, they know now there's help out there. Mm. And it's always good to talk. Yeah. That's what human beings do. They're a close-knit uh, species. Yeah. And to talk to one another about the problems and not be embarrassed, yeah. you know, it's, it's a great thing. And it's it, liberating, isn't it? It's liberating and yeah. it gets this thing brought to the front of the queue where it can be addressed yeah. properly. Do you, do, do you worry about Tyson, though? I mean, for, you know, he, the, the highs and the lows must be enormous. I mean, God knows how he... Well, you must know how he's feeling. I'm sure you've spoken to him on the telephone as this weekend mm. comes up. But uh, the highs and lows are absolutely enormous. Do you, do you worry about his stability for the future? I worry when uh, his career's over, when he finally stops boxing, what he's going to do with his life, because obviously he'll not have any money problems, he don't need to work. It's a boredom factor with Tyson. If he's got no goals and nothing to do to occupy his mind, yeah. then he could dip and start doing stupid stuff again, you know. You're obviously a great believer in work, aren't you? Absolutely. In keeping it's, it's really... Yeah, and mm. keeping really busy has sort of, you feel, helps to stabilise you as long, as long as you've got a goal, a real goal. Yeah. And you've actually said that... Tyson's at his worst when, because he's a boxer, he, what, how many fights a year does he have? About three or four? Well, if he's lucky, you know, and uh, what he could do with having three or four, like, and keeps him in the gym. But when, you, when you're down to, like, inactivity and you're having yeah. one fight in a year, you've got too much time on your hands. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. yeah. in a boxer's life, all he can do is train. You yeah. know, and when he's not training... Yeah. What are you That's doing? What are you, do? you can only have so many weeks holiday, can't you? It's, well, the, it's the same as so many guys in sport, not just boxing, but, but real athletes of yeah. one kind or another. The, the time when they have to face up that they're not doing it, they're not doing it for a while or they're not doing it forever, they have to retire. That is uh, tremendously well, psychologically testing. Uh, uh, my wife's forgiveness, can we just quickly talk about the fight? Any, <laughs> anything could anything <laughs> happen. Uh, obviously, it's a rematch because it was a draw last time, which was the first time Tyson hadn't won. You know, which must have been a devastating uh, mm. result for him. A lot of a lot of us think it, the, the, the verdict wasn't right, and he should have won. But never mind. We are where we are. <laughs> Frank Bruno has said that he would hate to be hit by Tyson's opponent because mm. he said he'd rather be run over by a bus because this guy's got an enormous punch. Are you worried about that? Are you worried that Tyson, if he because if he lets his concentration go for a second and that guy gets a chance to come in hard, that it's, it'll be all be over, won't it? Well, me, I'm, I'm, I get. To, um... The feeling of if he couldn't do it the first time when Tyson was at his weakest point, if he could weather the storm, then I've not got really much worry about the punch power because all heavyweights can punch. Yeah. Any guy over 14 stone can, can punch. Yeah. So it comes with a job. He's in the heavyweight division. He's used to taking punches. Yeah. He's not like a person that's never been punched before. He knows what to expect. He's been in there before with him. You know, and I do believe Tyson now is at his strongest. He's at his best. There'd be no excuses from me or the camp. You know, he's had probably a little few niggly injuries here and there. But nothing to three stop him caps. winning. Nothing to stop no. him winning. The best man will win because they're both at the top of the game now. And is, the, is your bottom line advice to your son when he gets into the ring to, to quote Jack Reacher in the novels, to get his retaliation in first? It's got to be done cleverly. Brains beats brawn, hmm. like scissors beats paper. <laughs> you know, you've got to think about what you're doing in a fight like this. And if you don't, you can come unstuck. It's a split second and it's over. You can be a mile ahead in points. Stop thinking for one second, it's over. Yeah. Well, very good luck to him via you. Thank you, you Judy. Will you be watching? Yes, I will. I'm going to the BD studios and uh, I'm right. doing the New York All Show. Yeah. On the evening time, and then we're going back there to watch it on the big screen. Right. Great. And, well, uh, and very thank, you good for, luck. thank you for your, your honesty here. To, yeah. To your daughter and all once again for your honesty on GMB on, on Monday. Oh, and on the documentary. It's on tonight, isn't it? Nine o'clock. It was on last night. Last night, sorry. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. OK, and the last one's next week. But it's, it's well worth watching, guys. It's, it's well, I'm glad everybody's enjoying it, you know. Yeah. And, uh, oh, they're loving it. They're loving the it. girls on the ITV team done a fabulous job. It was yeah. great meeting different people yeah. and an insight to how things happen. You and know. it's great hearing people telling the truth. And you know? maybe, Not yeah. spinning, not for spinning once, stuff. Well, there's, 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 no, yeah. there's no, yeah. nothing but the truth here. Because yeah. my, my grandfather would say, if you're going to tell a lie, don't say nothing at all. It's yeah. a waste of time. And may I say that I said I found your son uh, an extremely uh, intriguing and pleasant man, and I feel exactly the same way about you. It's lovely of you, you to you, come Thank you, Jude. In. It means a lot coming Thank from you. a lady like yourself. Thank you very much. I really Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you.